Hi everyone. So this is my third video and um, I looked at the other ones. I'm going to try to make this a little more fun and interesting rather than just information, information, information. So this one is going to be on power drill and driver. So this one is you can buy at you know local hardware store. My theory is if you're not using a power drill and driver for to make a living, if you're just a homeowner like me and you're using it for things around the house, you don't need to go buy the top of the line because this will suffice. Now I'm not getting any money for showing you this brand or this tool. I'm just telling you what happens out there in the real world is that if you're not going to use this to make a living, there's no reason to spend a lot of money. Now, the reason I like this brand is because um, the battery, this is a lithium ion battery, and I prefer these because they hold a charge over time, but they make one battery that fits a multitude of tools, which you'll probably see when um, I show you the power saw later, the little handheld circular saw that I'm going to do um, some videos on later. So that's the battery, pulls in and out um, fairly easily. The next part of this tool that I want to show you is the power switch. This is a variable speed drill and driver. So the more pressure that I put on the power switch, the faster the truck spins. Pretty straightforward. I keep saying drill and driver because this does two things. It drills holes and also can be used to drive screws and it can do a lot more things, but we'll talk about that later. Right now I just want to talk about the parts. This little yellow switch, I don't know how well you can see it in the video, goes back and forth. There's actually a little arrow on here. Hard to see, certainly not in this video, but if you have a drill you want to look up on it. This arrow faces forward. When I press this in, my chuck is going to be spinning in a clockwise direction. So that way, when I push it all the way in on this side, the arrow is facing back. It spins in a counterclockwise or a way to unscrew a screw. When we're drilling and driving a screw, we always want it to be going forward or clockwise position. There is a setting in the center, which is basically a safety that does not allow you to press on the power um, switch. So it's probably best to store it in that way. And I also recommend that you never store your tool with the battery installed. Keep them separate. Um, no reason to keep it installed. Okay, so we have the battery, the power switch, and the directional switch. Now I want to talk about this here. This is called the chuck. This is a half inch drill. The reason it's called a half inch drill, very simple. The maximum diameter drill bit that you can fit into this chuck is a half inch. So the diameter would be a half inch. That's the maximum that can fit in there. Now what if you need to drill a hole that's bigger? Well, there's other tools for that like this spade bit, but we're going to talk about that in another video. So as I rotate this chuck, you can see, I hope, that the teeth are either getting larger or smaller. In this case, you can see that they're getting smaller. So depending on what I'm going to put in here. So if I want to put this drill in here, I'm going to put that in, tighten down the chuck, and now it's secure and I can draw a hole. Okay, so that's the chuck. You tighten and loosen it by spinning this. Now in older drills, they used to have a chuck key and actually in, in much larger drills that are very high powered, they have chuck keys, but I'm not going to go into that either. Sorry. We can do that other time, but 99.9% .9 of you will never need to use a chuck key. So you can call me or email me if you have to, and I'll tell you what that is. Um, okay, here we go. This has a gear switch on it. Not all of these drills do, um, but this one does. So I'm going to talk about it. There is a one and a two. So the one is going to be lower turning speed. Even at the highest, it's hard to tell the difference. Anyways, um, but it does have a higher turning force or torque. 
So if I am drilling into very hard material or I have to drive a three inch deck screw into some redwood, I might need to, especially for me, I don't have quite the uh, directional force that maybe a, a guy would have, then one would be a good setting for that. Two is gonna be higher speed, a little bit lighter turning force. That's really what you want it to be on if you're drilling. So that those are those two settings. As I said, not all the drills will have them, so it may not be um, an issue for you. Now the last part of this drill that I wanna talk about is the adjustable clutch. This is probably the most misunderstood part of a drill. So you can see, hopefully, again, that there are numbers on this that are surround this. Not only are there numbers, but there's this little icon here. That, or graphic, that's supposed to be the picture of a drill. So if I'm drilling, I want this rotated around till that little arrow is pointing to that graphic. Now there are some out there like that, like this that have a switch somewhere on the side. And basically the little graphic is a screw, what looks like a little screw, looks like a little drill. So if you're drilling, using this to drill a hole, you're gonna put it on the little picture of the drill. And if you're driving a screw, you're gonna put it on the little picture of the screw. Now, what does that do? Well, when it's on this setting, I've disengaged the adjustable clutch. Basically, the clutch is not gonna be working if I have it on this little icon. And that's what I want for drilling because I don't want my um, clutch to engage. Now let's talk about how the clutch works. Depending on the setting that I put on this, if I have it on a really low setting, then it's not going to take very much resistance or force to disengage my clutch, which a clutch is simply a way to engage or disengage gears. It's going to disengage the clutch or the gears so that my chuck doesn't spin anymore. So I'm going to, I have it on the lowest setting and I'm going to, let me tighten this. Okay, so now on the lowest setting, I'm just gonna um, use my hand to mimic a um, driving a screw and maybe you hit a knot in wood. And hear that clicking sound? I'm actually able to stop that from spinning. Now the higher number I use, the harder it is to get this to stop spinning. Now why do I want it to stop spinning? Well what this does when you're driving screws is it protects either the, prop, the piece of material that you're screwing a screw into or, I almost said piece of material you're screwing so we don't want to go there, but the material that you're driving the screw into, if it's real soft and this is on a high number, you could just drive that screw right through that material. So I want it on a low number. So it just drives my screw to the point I want and then it stops. So I can actually control that by using this adjustment. Now, if I have to do a three inch deck screw, like I mentioned earlier, I might need to have that all the way up in the high 20s and put it on a one so that I have a high turning force and it's gonna take a lot of resistance before this will stop spinning. So I can keep driving that screw slowly um, into that material until it gets to the part that we want. So I have two ways to control what this is doing. That's with my variable speed and with an adjustment on a chuck. So. Back to the beginning, if I'm drilling, I want this to be on the picture of the drill or my switch to be on a picture on the drill. If I'm driving screws, I want to decide the ideal um, setting for this. Now, in a later video, when I show you how to drill and drive screws, then I'll go into the settings here and demonstrate a little bit better how this works. So if you have one of these at home and you're wondering what all of these settings were for, I hope I answered your questions. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to email me, um, you can always, or shoot me a message on Facebook or whatever. You can always uh, do that. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks. Have a great day.